working. There you go. Thank you. Okay. Calling the meeting to order. Um, this portion is going to be comments from citizens present. If you would like to raise your hand, we can call on you on order. Anybody would like to address the commission? Sandy Witte has her hand, um, her literal hand up. There's. Oh, <laughs> I don't have yeah. that screen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, Sandy, if you'd like to, you have three minutes, please state your name and your address for the record. Nope, you're muted, Sandy. <laughs> uh, my name is Sandy Witte, and my husband and I, Har Harvey and I, uh, live at 7128 Hubbard Avenue, just down the street. We live in an old home with no central air and really enjoy having our windows open. Our backyard neighbor put their chicken coop on their lot by our back fence facing our house. The, the cackling of the chickens have been on, going on for a long time. And what I know about chickens is they're productive laying eggs for the first two or three years. So we get different batches, I think, of chickens. Um, there's been a variety of issues from uh, being woken up at 5.30 in the morning by chickens. Uh, they had a rooster, apparently did not know they had a rooster until we told them. And, uh, and uh, now, for some reason, whatever chickens they have, they're cackling very, very loud. And I sent a video over to uh, Dan Cotter and uh, Kathy. Uh, and uh, I can also send you the video because it's very, very loud. Uh, in looking over the, the draft of the proposed ordinance, uh, there's no mention about letting the neighbors know when someone decides to apply for a permit for chickens. Neighbors uh, should get a notice of the application from the city. There should be an open meeting so we can discuss and meet the applicant. And then they can inform us on how they're gonna be raising chickens because I'm not a chicken person, but it'd be nice for somebody to tell me about it. Uh, they, should be, they should give us all their information. So if we have a concern, we can either email or talk to them. So it opens up the communication. Um, we could treat it like the variance where you have to go and you have to fill out an application, you have to go to a meeting to get okay for a variance, and I think that would solve a lot of the issues. Uh, there's no mention about where the coop it faces. Um, their coop faces us, and it has like a lean-to roof, and it acts like a, a band shell, so all the, all the noise is coming towards us, and it's right by the fence. And, uh, but there's no mention in the ordinance. So we would like to have the uh, coop facing them and not us. Uh, there was no mention about the placement of the compost pile. Their compost pile is right by our fence, our lot line. And uh, they compost and it's real smelly in the summertime. I don't know if they put any chicken waste in there, but it, it's pretty smelly. Um, we noted the fines for the violations are like $30 starting out. I don't know if that's going to be enough to prevent future violations, but you know, maybe a sliding scale would be nice. You know, the first one's 30, the next one is a little bit more, and then the third one uh, should be higher, and because that's when they're going to have their permit taken away. Um, also, uh, the the ordinance, the proposed ordinance, states a coop can be no taller than 12 feet in height from the grade, and 18 inches off the ground. We only have a six foot fence, so our fence doesn't block any of the noise at all. So it'd be nice if we could have a higher fence, maybe 14 feet, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, the coop uh, has to be located no closer than 25 feet from the nearest dwelling. And I like added words to this, it's the nearest dwelling would be their dwelling. So I would say closer than 25 feet from the nearest dwelling, which is their dwelling. So that wording should be put in as the owner's dwelling. And then when applying for a permit, I'm a little confused on what the process is. Will the inspector check with the police department to see if there's any previous violations? If someone gets three violations, will the police notify the inspector at city hall um, about the violations or do, and do they take the permit away right away or do they wait for the renewal? 
if someone gets three violations, will the police, uh, well, then we go back to who's in, who's talking to who about the violations. Um, Same here, three have, minutes is almost up, so. Okay, and if we have a problem with noise, well, who do we go to? Do we go to the police or what do we do? Uh, I, we hate to go to the police and bother them. You got enough stuff going on. So um, uh, we just want some peace and quiet. It'd be nice not to have to shut our doors and windows. So, you know, I appreciate you letting us give you some input. So I can also send this to you because I know I have to talk real fast. So I can thank also you. send this to Kathy Olson if you want to share the information. So thank you. Thank appreciate you, Kathy, for sharing. Um, we have hey, Marnie Kathy. Ginsburg. Hey, Kathy, this is Nick. Oh, wait, Nick, can you hold on? We have Marnie Ginsburg who has her hand up. Marnie, can you state your uh, name and address, please? Hi, um, actually, it's her husband, Alex oh. Klinitsky. Sorry about that, using her Zoom line. Um, and my address is 7101 Franklin Avenue. And again, it's Alex Podnitsky. I can change it in a minute here on here. And uh, I'm sorry if I missed the be beginning, but I guess um, I have, we have chickens. We really like them. My understanding from talking to our neighbors is they really like them too. And I'd appreciate, um, to better understand where some of this is coming from. And I mean, I know that, you know, my neighbors have dogs and they bark and I'm totally fine with that. You know, that's just living in a community in the neighborhood. Um, you know, I guess I just want to better understand where all this is coming from. And, you know, also I'd like to see the, um, the limit be much higher, maybe like 10 or so chickens. Um, I, I understand like a flock of chickens is about seven and that they're much happier they're together as a flock. Um, and I, I just think it's great. It's sustainable. My chickens are happy. I, I mean, at least I think they are. I don't know, I guess, if they're happy. And uh, nice to be able to get backyard chicken eggs, you know. I feel much better about the way my chickens are raised than maybe eggs I would probably find in the, in the market, which are probably often from concentrated animal feed operating lots. Um, so, I guess I would really love to see uh, the council reject this uh, ordinance or make it drastically different would be my ideal because I think we should be encouraging people to have chickens. And just from what I'm seeing, a lot of it doesn't seem to be that way. Um, $100 seems like a really high registration fee. And I said something about the building inspector having to inspect it. And I, I hope that there's more important things in Middleton to do for the building inspector, but I'm not even sure what the building codes are for a chicken coop, I guess. Um, so I don't know what else I can say, but I definitely would love to uh, see this rejected, I guess. That's all I got. Thank you. Um, next, we have um, Tyler Emmerich. Can you state your address, please, Tyler, for the record? Hi, uh, I'm Tyler. I live at 7320 Elmwood Avenue. Um, I certainly support a... Uh, an ordinance uh, licensing for, for backyard chickens that makes sense, uh, just like we do for cats and dogs. Um, I also have backyard chickens. My family uh, has four chickens and um, I just, I certainly relate to Sandy and her concerns, um, but uh, I guess I'm just kind of blown away at the depth and length of this proposed ordinance for chickens. Uh, we have three paragraphs of an ordinance for dogs and cats about getting a dog license. Uh, they shouldn't run at large and they could be impounded if they run at large. The proposed ordinance for the chickens uh, involves a $100 fee, which was mentioned for a building inspector, um, scale drawings showing a, a layout of the coop and where it is. Uh, you know, do we do scale drawings showing a fence and a dog house and, and a kennel for everybody that has a dog in Middleton? Uh, sufficient design detail to show all the details for the building inspector to review compliance. Again, do we map out what our dogs do in our backyards uh, for, for licensing? Uh, talks about the, the setbacks and, and all that. Again, that just limits so many people on where they can actually place uh, backyard chickens in their, in their home and in their yard. Um, it talks about being the coop being in good repair uh, and staying above 40 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, what on earth... Does, it depends on the chicken breed and on how you're heating your chicken coop. And that could really injure certain chicken breeds to have it at a certain temperature in the winter. Talks about 
uh, feed, having the feed kept in airtight and waterproof containers. What about dog food and the, and the dog toys that they have out in the yard? Waste, chicken waste uh, being removed frequently, not less than one week. What about dog waste? What about cleaning up dog poop in people's yards? Uh, do we have an ordinance stating when you got to clean up your dog poop? Uh, water, chickens has to have a fresh source of water. Well, duh, why does this have to be in an ordinance uh, for people taking care of their backyard chickens? Uh, fenced, fencing with six inches below ground, one inch spacing. We have ordinance on fence height for dogs to make sure depending on the dog size, it can't jump over the fence. Uh, I mean, this is, it's just, it's unbelievable that the length of this ordinance for backyard chickens. So I support an ordinance. I support licensing for backyard chickens. That's absolutely the responsible right thing to do. But this is, this is crazy. This ordinance. Thank you. Thank you, Tyler. Next, we have Janine Bindle. Please state your address and to the record, please. Hi, I'm Janine. My address is 7302 Elmwood Avenue. And I am here to voice, um, similar to Tyler and Sasha, support for backyard chickens um, and also support for an ordinance. Um, we also have chickens. Um, our chickens add a lot to the quality of life of our kids. Um, we have had a number of positive things come from chickens, from care of an animal to engineering of the structure, um, understanding the responsibilities associated, um, understanding life cycle, life and death. Um, I think there are a lot of benefits that come along with having backyard chickens. And I would encourage the council um, to reconsider the ordinance that has been proposed and consider some best practices. I would be more than willing to assist in that process if necessary. Um, but as written, the ordinance, in my opinion, is um, too specific and not realistic. That is all I have. Thank you very much. Okay, next we have Alexandra Sasha Kadinsky. Please state your address for the record, please. Hi, uh, 7101 Franklin Avenue. And sorry, I spoke a little earlier. I just wanted to add one thing because I wasn't prepared because I didn't know. I was told we wouldn't be able to speak at this meeting, but I just wanted to add the 40 degrees thing is concerning because when I did my research before buying chickens was that it could be a fire hazard to keep heating out in the chicken area. And I would hate to have extra fires in Middleton. Like that just seems unnecessary and scary to me as a homeowner. Um, first of all, and second of all, that should there be a power outage, which on occasion happens and it's, it's you know, not good, um, the chickens then wouldn't have the fat that they need to survive the winter. So I've had chickens probably for 10 years here in Middleton and they've always survived the winter without heating. And I would hate for them to die because there was a power outage because of this ordinance. So I just wanted to add that piece as well. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Okay. I don't see any of their hands. I think, uh, Nick, you wanted to speak. If you could state your name and address for the record, please. Uh, Nick Bame, 7225 Hubbard Avenue. Um, I am a downtown Middleton resident. And for folks here that are un unaware of the problems with chickens, I am a victim of irresponsible neighbors who happen to also be irresponsible chicken owners. The coop resides less than eight feet from our bedroom window central air unit and dining room. The coop is very large and holds over eight chickens, which also run loose in the yard. One of which um, has a rooster sound, which has been identified as a possible chicken that uh, behaves like a rooster. Uh, this has all been you know, witnessed and heard by everybody besides myself. In the course of the last year, I've contended with vermin attempting to get into the coop I have foxes regularly killing vermin on my property on a daily basis and on the adjoining property that has uh, a, a fence area in between both properties. I have property damage as a result of animals digging under my fence attempting to go into the chicken coop. This has been going on for close to a year. We have never had an influx of vermin on our property in the 35 years we have lived here let alone we have never had foxes on a daily basis running around in my backyard attempting to get into the neighbor's chicken coop. Animals coming near the chicken coop at night 
stir up the chicken noise, which can last for a minimum of 10 minutes up to two hours. Raccoons attacking the top of the chicken coop coming down from trees or climbing fences along with foxes and other vermin attempting to get into the coop can happen at any time of the day. My wife has a lung condition is infected by particles in the air and strong odors. And this is all stemmed from not being able to enjoy our backyard and our property because we have irresponsible chicken owners who aren't cleaning up or have attempted to clean up and then stopped cleaning up. And uh, with chickens running loose on their property all over the place um, with no attempt to clean up the particle and odor on warmer days or days of dew in the morning uh, make the problem even worse. Odor has been observed in this area by many residents who have walked by. If one was to see what was attempted to clean up, they'd run for the hills. There are many people that are not responsible chicken owners. And here we have a prime example. We also have to go by the hours that the chickens wake up, whether it's because of the animals trying to get in the coop or whether they just start up at any given time. Three in the morning, two in the morning, midnight, doesn't matter. Happens all the time. I have documented dozens of videos and photos and submitted that to city staff along with filing a police report. Nick, the your noise, time is up, so please finish up, Nick. Your time is, three minutes is up, so you can finish I, up. I am 100% behind the new ordinance, and I'm 100% be, be, uh, in place of no grandfather clause in the current chicken owners. And I am also in favor of tightening up any loose ends in the new ordinance, along with anything that Kathy Olson might see that she would like to add in. I rest the case. Okay. Thank you, Nick. Um, any of uh, anyone else who would like to speak? Anyone else? Okay. Hearing none, we're going to move on to the approval of the minutes from the September 14th, 2021 LNO meeting. Ramsey will move approval. I'll second. Any discussion on the minutes? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Minute, minutes are approved. We're moving on to license and permits. Number one, review of the application to add Jack Jacqueline uh, Kosi and Philip Nelson as officers on the be adult alcohol beverage license held by Ultimate Mart LLC doing businesses. Pick and save number 128, 6800 7, uh, Century Avenue. Uh, this is just they're, they're adding them as their new employees, uh, newly appointed VPs. Uh, no issues on their background, so I'd recommend approval. I will move approval um, and no relation to <laughs> Philip Nelson. <laughs> Second. Okay, for any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed, uh, carries, application carries. We'll do the next two together. Application for a special event permit by race day events. Garrett Wilson, contact person for the 2021 Fleet Feet New York Year's Day Dash on January 1st, 2020 at Kiva Sports Center and also the application for an outdoor amplified sound permit by Garrett Wilson for race day events, 2995 Sub-Zero Parkway, Fitchburg, Wisconsin for sound system announcements from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. on January 1st, 2021 for the 2021, will it be? 22. January 1st, 2022. Correct, 2022. Uh, that would be. That's a typo on my part, sorry about that. For the 2022 uh, Fleet Feet New Year's Day Dash and also on the application for the special event permit, we want that for January 1st, 2022 and 2022 for the, in both, both areas, so. Yeah, I see three of them on our agenda, but that's cool. Yeah. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. And this, we've had it's this like event before, correct? Yes, this is an annual event. Um, and yes, I apologize about that. I'm just clearly not thinking 2022 yet, but um, it looks like on both the permit applications for the special event and also the amplified sound, it does list 22. Um, 
but yeah, this is an annual event, um, very similar to previous years in regards to their event plans and route. And uh, we do have Garrett Wilson um, with race day events on the call if um, there are any specific questions. I don't have any questions, Dan. No, I don't have any. I would move approval. I'll second. Okay. I thought it was well documented and everything laid out very well. So it's, it's happy to see that. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all in favor of the special event permit and outdoor amplified sound permit for the 2022 Fleet Feet New Year's Day Dash, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? Application carries. On to ordinance. An ordinance to permit the keeping of chickens. We were all given a draft of an ordinance that was presented by Matt Fleming. And um, I have a question. At, at this point, everyone is in compliance that we know of, right? With the, with the current zoning that is set up. I can't say that because the current ordinance has three specific um, items um, let's see I two think feet I... from the lot line no commercial operation no roosters no roosters and, and there was feet. one other thing a water no there's one other thing and i got a okay um it's oh there it is okay and there's no number right now there is no number. The other part of the ordinance states, um, impacts must not be unreasonably objectionable or disruptive to normal residency, residential occupancies of the neighborhood or a hazard to public health and safety. Okay. That's questionable whether that is um, in compliance or not, but we do, um, I do want to say that- Susan I, can help, right? Yeah, I, I, I just want to say that we're not, trying to uh, um, get rid of chickens. We have, and most responsible chicken owners, I think can, would agree that cleaning the coop is a good thing and it makes for healthy, happy chickens. And um, some of the things outlined in here also, um, having fresh water is, is just good, um, good for the chickens, their, their health and well being as well. Um, while not everyone is a responsible chicken owner, I'm, I'm hoping that some of these, these regulations, which throughout Dane County are very standard. The hope was that by the three things that we had listed in Middleton, that the nuisance ordinance could cover those. They are very difficult to enforce based on the nuisance ordinance. And that's why other villages and cities have both chicken ordinances and nuisance ordinances, not just relying on the nuisance ordinance. Matt, did you want to say anything on this? Um, yeah, sorry, I've been scrambling a little bit. I'm trying to switch computers here because I oh, apparently. Okay. Well, we can... <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, uh, you know, I, you know, this was intended to be a, you know, kind of a framework for some discussions, as you indicated. Right now our current regulations as they relate to chickens are you know is is pretty thin i mean not much in the way of specifics uh you know basically just comes down to you know don't make a lot of noise and don't make a lot of smell <laughs> for lack of anything else and that you know that has apparently not you know been a terrible situation until recently now although i think there may be some indication that there have been some problems going on longer than um than maybe we know about and it's just a few things coming to a head but i would say overall you know uh cut I, I tried to draft this you know knowing that we're coming from really very little regulation and um you know so for instance um you know, this is the permit system here is designed to be pretty much administrative. Uh, so, um, you know, there were other ordinances that have a, have a much more onerous process, uh, maybe a, being approved by somebody rather than a, um, 
you know, a, a, somebody in this case, the building inspector, which is certainly a, a quicker process and less onerous. So that's um, seemed to be a decent balance. Uh, you know, the, really what we're trying to do here is mostly try to, um, you know, get a few hard and fast rules that I think might have addressed most of the problems we're seeing in the areas where we're having problems. Um, you know, and a lot of the numbers that are in there are, are similar to other ordinances, I think in some ways more permissive in, in some sense, uh, you know, maybe less permissive than, than in others, but certainly for those ordinances that I looked at um, where communities are more similar to Middleton, I think we are relatively permissive, but um, there's certainly a lot of areas I think that you, know, you can talk about, um, you know, for instance, there were some comments, you know, Kathy, for instance, I've already made some tweaks to incorporate ordinance violations that are in other parts of the code that, re, you know, that relate to chicken. So, you know, we'll, if we got noise ordinances or, or things like that, those will be incorporated. And as long as those violations arise from the keeping of chickens, yeah, I, I think that's a, a um, Kind of a no-brainer that so i've already sort of made that change um one thing that larry had suggested is actually um that it may make sense to have a actually a minimum number of chickens at least four hens that should be kept uh, i think somebody else had talked about you know how uh, you know certainly chickens need sort of a minimum number to keep happy. They have a pecking order and it's a behavioral thing. Um, and so uh, for those you don't know, Larry had authored a book, on, uh, uh, well, edited a book on urban agriculture and, and uh, it's extensive talk about chickens in there. Um, so that's something I, I think maybe it makes sense to add. Um, uh, Jim Schollander, our building inspector, Something I think we need to talk about is apparently there's a number of air, uh, places where um, folks let their chickens run outside the run, which um, in some instances, it's not a problem, I guess. Um, but it certainly, uh, you know, raises the potential of, you know, other disturbances happening. Um, you know, unfortunately this comes, a lot of this comes down to where you've got responsible chicken owners, you tend to not have problems <laughs> and where you have irresponsible ones, you tend to, and, and we're sort of stuck in the middle because if you have to proceed just on a pure nuisance theory, um, you know, it's rarely an instance of just looking at chickens. There's all kinds of other things that go along with it and we can't be present, you know, at every given time to necessarily have the evidence. It can be difficult to, to prove those cases and particularly difficult to uh, do anything but maybe issue one citation, you know, hopefully that would take care of it. But if it comes to the point of really needing to put a stop because the, the uh, people who have the chickens are, are, are just not getting it done, that can be a very long and arduous and difficult process. And that's really where the impetus for this, for having a more specific ordinance has come from. Uh, I know Abby is on the call here, so I, I, I had kind of been prepared to talk about some of the issues she had raised, but uh, since she is here, I might uh, let her, if she would like to, um, comments on, on some of the other things. I think certainly a couple issues she raised that I think are, are pretty clear is when we're talking about the distance, if we're, if we're talking about the distance from the nearest dwelling, I, I certainly meant to be A, referring to uh, distance from the nearest neighboring dwelling. Um, I, I guess, unless anyone else disagrees, I'm not terribly concerned with how close the chicken coop is to the owner's dwelling. It's the proximity to the, the neighboring dwelling. And then, but the other issue I think that deserves some discussion is whether it just be specified as the primary or principal dwelling. You know, if in the future we become more permissive as to accessory dwellings, uh, you know, mother-in-law suites and that kind of thing. Um, 
And then uh, another issue, uh, I think I need to have some definitions of side yard. Um, I mean, when I'm talking about side yard in this ordinance, I really, I'm not talking about a side yard setback per se. I'm talking about the side yard as really being the area between the front and the back of the house along, you know, along the sides and everything from the back on would be in the rear yard. That's where I'm intending this ordinance to require the chicken coops to be placed. So I think some definitions uh, I'll need to add to, to make sure that's clear because in one of Abby's comments, uh, it wasn't clear for her what I was talking about and I can certainly see where, where it wouldn't be. The ordinance, yes. exactly, exactly what I thought it said, but uh, it needs to speak to more than just me. So, but Abby, I don't know if you wanna talk about some of the other things you raised in, in your email as uh, other discussion points. Sure, I, I was not prepared to speak um, at this meeting, but thanks for giving me the opportunity. And I'll just share kind of my overarching thought about the ordinance um, and then some of the specific concerns that I have with the proposed ordinance. Um, just in general, I, I guess um, I come at this from a little bit different, sorry, you probably can't see me because it's a little dark right now. Um, I come at this from a different uh, standpoint generally, which is I think that we should try to be um, more uh, permissive where possible because in my opinion, um, the keeping of urban chickens is a sustainable practice and the city has long um, held uh, beliefs that we support environmental sustainability, we support um, local food and local agriculture. And um, I know that our city's sustainability committee took this up um, under consideration when I first came to the city uh, about 15 years ago. And they made a uh, recommendation um, after reviewing the ordinance and looking at a couple of other examples from other communities that we should leave it as is because they really wanted to um, be a city that is friendly to keeping of chickens. Um, I know um, I, I, my department, which is planning and community development, um, used to be the, the department that would accept um, calls and questions about chickens. And most of the time, those were questions from uh, people in the community that were interested in keeping chickens. And sometimes those people who were moving into Middleton and they wanted to know what the requirements were before they decided whether or not to purchase a home. Um, I know that more recently, there have been some um, significant concerns, I think, as it relates to two to three households in District 1. Um, there may be other complaints that I'm not aware of. Um, my goal would be to look at ways that we can address those concerns through the existing nuisance ordinances that we already have in place where possible, and then to only look to, at making um, new and more strict um, requirements where we can't address the concerns um, that are already there. So more specifically, some of the concerns um, that I have relate to distance from the lot line, and especially in cases where we have permitted um, the building of chicken coops, which we've treated as a landscaping feature, and that only requires a two foot uh, side or rear yard setback. So the concern is that many individuals in the community have invested substantially in um, building coops in their yard, and now we are going to um, make those structures non-compliant. In some cases, they haven't received a building permit because um, it's it's really not a requirement at this point in time, but in some cases, they may have received a permit from um, our department the, through um, a zoning permit. Um, I also would be concerned that there are some smaller lots in the community that aren't gonna be able to keep chickens at all. Um, so if you read the city's recently approved comprehensive plan, we're encouraging smaller lots, more compact development, more, more walkable neighborhoods. And I don't want people who have smaller lots in the um, community to be penalized and to not have the same um, rights for um, keep the keeping of animals that uh, people who live in the larger uh, lot neighborhoods like North Lake or Stonefield would have. Um, I am also concerned about the number of chickens and especially as it relates to the compliance period, because I think that most of the people who I know in our community who are already keeping chickens have more than four chickens and to all, to all of a sudden adopt a new ordinance and only give those people 90 days um, to bring their coop into compliance, I think is unrealistic. Um, 
I know that some people treat these as their pets. So all of a sudden the city approves a new ordinance and people have 90 days to find a, a home for four of their pets. I think that that's um, a little cold and I would hope that we would um, modify at least the compliance period on that. Um, I think the fees and fines are a little steep in my opinion. Um, I feel like, I mean, at least from my experience living in two neighborhoods now in Middleton for t more than 10 years, um, I hear a lot more noise from dogs than I hear from chickens. So I, I would agree with the speaker um, who mentioned kind of comparing this to how we would treat other animals. Um, and then also the compliance period as it relates to actually moving the coop to another location on the lot where it can be permitted. Um, logistically, if this gets approved um, in the winter, that's going to be really hard for people to do because the ground is frozen. So I, I just would hope that we think about some of those challenges. And I think this is going to affect a lot of houses um, in the community. And that's it. Abby, do you have any idea how many chicken, chicken owners there are? Off the top of my head, I do not, um, but I will say that in the neighborhood that I just moved from, which is the neighborhood near the high school, it seems like it's every third or fourth house. There are a lot of people. Okay. Um, I was going to ask, Jim, would you like to address some of the concerns that you have about en enforcement of uh, chicken ordinances and, that we have now? Or? Uh, yeah, it, it's, uh, it, it, from an enforcement standpoint, the, the ordinances are very vague um, and it does, as, as was previously, previously mentioned, it, it all goes back to nuisances. Um, you know, the, 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 major, the majority of the complaints that we've been dealing with the last couple of months all seem to be related to location on the lot um, and the amount of chickens from what I can tell. Um, some of these are very small lots with eight or more chickens that it just, it's a lot of animals in a very tiny yard that just, you know, they, there's not enough room in, in my opinion. Um, but it, it leaves it up to the, to the definition of what becomes nuisance from, from a noise standpoint, a smell and odor standpoint. Me and Matt have had many discussions over that and, and, you know, does it fall back on us or the police department? Um, it, it would be nice to have some ordinances that, that have some definitions that we can point to specifics with for when it comes to enforcement on that. Jim, you came from Madison, correct? Yes. And they have a more, def um, it's not, it's defined as some communities, but it does have a more defined uh, ordinance than what we have here. Was it easier to enforce or were you not involved in that in your, in your role? The only time that I was involved with it in Madison was rooster complaints and uh, commercial application where we had a couple owners that were, had lots and lots of chickens on their lot, massive egg production, and then selling them at the farmer's market. Um, and the other <laughs> ones were roosters. <laughs> um, we didn't really have a lot of, of noise complaints that I recall in, in doing that. I, I ran the downtown in Madison for 12 years. Um, I don't remember a lot of noise complaints coming from chickens. And we have mad downtown Madison has a lot of chicken owners. Um, you know, and, and honestly, I'd say probably 90% of our chicken owners, even in Middleton do a beautiful job but we've got a few that just aren't as responsible as the others. And, and those are the ones that are driving the ordinance, unfortunately, or, or this change in the, in the ordinance right now. Thank you. I know that some people are very hesitant to complain about chickens. They don't know who to complain to. They don't want to bother the police. Um, and they don't want to create a hostile situation with the neighbors. And I think by making the more defined regulations that it's going to help in the long run so that we don't so that we 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 don't have the issues like having somebody putting eight chickens on your on your property line right next to your home i grew up on a farm and the chicken coop was always located far away because chickens are noisy smelly and they they attract vermin and the fact that someone would put it right next to someone's home really disturbs me. 
I just think that um, that this simple, the simplifying the ordinance and making it more in line with all the other cities and villages in in Dane County will will serve us well. And I, I would like to just start at the top of the ordinance and um, I do have some comments on here that I've, I've gotten from other people and I wanted to get your feedback, Katie and Dan on them and Matt. Um, one thing in the keeping of chickens, the question did come up, um, are we going to limit this to just chickens? How, do we wanna allow ducks, geese, turkeys, pheasant, quails? Or is that a question further down the line that we wanna talk about? I think we should limit it to uh, to chickens. I don't think we want to expand it at this point. Okay. Well, yeah, but we should keep in mind. I, I thought about. I, I had the very same question in my mind, and um, uh, not really sure how to answer it. I mean, I, the, the problems and everything, from what I understood, were coming from chickens. But you know. Um, Currently, the zoning code language just allows you to keep birds. Uh, I mean, it's very broad. So what we would have um, is a situation where basically just the nuisance principle would apply to ducks or any other types of birds that people might have. I don't know if people are keeping ducks, but certainly a lot of this stuff probably would not apply to ducks. I don't know if you I, yeah. I don't I've never heard of a duck coop. I don't, I just know nothing about the care of ducks or uh, keeping of domesticated ducks. So um, I think it's something we should keep on our radar, but um, I certainly think the, a lot of the details are probably fairly chicken specific and mm -hmm. we should probably look at this and then, you know, if it becomes, it looks like, we need to deal with other types of fowl we ought to yeah, yeah. do so. I, I have heard of one other place where they do keep ducks, but I was trying to see if I could find where like, I know people keep rabbits and hutches and different animals like that. So I think that would also kind of fall under the nuisance ordinance if people aren't cleaning the, the pens and hutches and stuff. So um, just so we'll keep this, so leave this as chickens and let the other birds be addressed through the nuisance ordinance. And then under the purpose um, statement, Matt, you had specifically called out but not limited to chapters 10 and 23. And I was hoping that we could include, as, as for people who are reading this, looking for where do I find, what, 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 if I'm having problems, where can I find it? That we could add in there also a chapter 16, which talks about public peace and good order and chapter 17, which talks about public nuisances, because that's where you're going to sure. find, um, find about smells and noise. So if we would add, we'd have 10, 16, 17, and 23. And then um, we do have to kind of address um, the uh, within no later than 90 days of the effective date that we want this uh, addressed. The, the question I have is we are currently dealing with some complaints that I don't want this to go into effect on January 1st. And then there's another three months after that, how we're going to address the, the current complaints that we have. And then um, under permit- Kathy, I wanna know how many, how many complaints have you, how many people are not complying do you think i did receive three complaints and one complaint was baseless and then there's two that we have right now that are and they're are separate residences they are separate mm -hmm. yes uh we have uh, this is jim we have three of them um that are active complaints right now that that we've me and between myself and dan have been involved with and verified thank you Thank you. So currently three. How many, okay. how, excuse me, how many, about how many complaints do we get a year and are they all in one area or? We, as far as I know, we have not been getting any until recently. Correct. It's only been the last probably three months that we've started to get these complaints, at least down for me and Dan. Now, Kathy, is that true in your 
district? Well, I, I think, think I think you the have more. First one I district. heard about was much. It was like June, maybe or sooner. It was early in the year when we we first started having uh, um, issues with the, one of the owners and the smell and the noises. It's one that's located closest to the property line. So okay. Um, um, let me have a comparison, help me out. How many complaints usually do we get um, about dogs? Do you know, Jeremy? Uh, that would be really hard to get you a number. We, we get plenty of complaints about dogs, and, but it would okay. be, in, in our system, it would be documented as a noise complaint or an animal complaint, so I couldn't necessarily get okay. you excellent numbers. But, gotcha. Yeah. And also without having a good way to track how many chicken uh, coops we have, it's it's kind of hard to call. We get so many dogs and so many chickens, you know. Mm -hmm. So we don't have a number of how many chickens are being kept in Middleton. Um, anything else, Dan, Katie, before we go on? I'm uh, really gonna push for grandfathering. I don't like this 90 days. Um, some of these structures are permanent and they're in compliance right now. So, uh, that's just my comment. Okay. Um, under permit section C, where you talk about multi-tenant properties, I would like somehow that we can also reference rentals of single property homes so that they would have to get the owner's permission if, it, if it's a renter. Uh, multi-tenant property. I would think that would be part of a lease, like you have to get permission from the owner to have a any pet, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah, typically I would expect the, the, the issues I'm trying to deal with in the multi-tenant property issue is the 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 possibility that you have many Coop, different tenants all wanting all wanting right. coops. Exactly. Um, where I, I, I mean we can talk about needing owner approval, but I mean typically a lease is either going to allow or not allow somebody to have have a coop. Um, so I, I think that's I just, standard language in a, in a lease. Well, no, but it's it. They allow pets, and I mean, bottom line is 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 that you know ultimately um, you know the owner has control over what's going to be allowed or not allowed on their property. Um, right. But if it's somebody that's living there, I mean. I, I don't want to really, I, I didn't think it was really our interest to get in between the landowner and the thing, at the, but multi-tenant properties presented a, a specific problem because you would have potentially many different residents of one building wanting a coop and we don't want right. you know, Understood. 50 Understood. different coops. Um, right. But if you, well, we can, we can just, uh, this is not one of the bigger issues because there's probably sure. not going to have a lot of that happening, but I just, as, if I were the owner and I was renting my house and somebody was putting up a coop and <laughs> I might want to. Uh, yeah. But I would tell them, I would tell them not to. <laughs> because yeah, my you know, I guess that's, um, yeah, not our circus, not our monkeys, but, um, yeah. Okay. Um, the next question, I don't know if it's for Jim or Jeremy. Um, there's been recently where they would uh, uh, schedule when they're going to come back and reinspect something and the, and the coop was clean because they knew they were coming. How do you address like return visits um, for inspections? Is that a um... So this is Jim. So one of the cases I've talked with the owner and just said, Hey, do you mind if we stop back unannounced every once in a while, just to look over the fence to, to look in your coop. And that particular mm -hmm. owner said, no, anytime you want, stop by. You have, you're, you're more than welcome to look in my backyard whenever. Um, it, it, you know, but always normally 100% of the time ask for permission to go on somebody's property to do an inspection. We're allowed to go to the front door and, and, you know, knock on the door and ask for permission. If they do not give me permission, then I would, you know, if need be, we have gone into the inspection warrant, which then, you know, the court says I have permission to go on that property and investigate. 
Oh. Well, and also I think keep in mind, Jim, too, that you know, I mean, particularly where you've got situations with a complaining neighbor. You know, I, you know, if the complaining neighbor allows you onto their property into the backyard, I mean, you're allowed to look. Yes. Look at whatever you can see from, from the yes. neighbor's backyard, and um, so uh, I would hope a complaining neighbor would would always be cooperative in letting. You yeah. Know. No. And and that. Yeah. That. The, yes. Yeah. I didn't mention that, but yes, the complaining neighbors yeah. usually let us on their property to witness what we can from from their perspective. Sure. Yeah. Well, that might not always give you the source of the odors either. Right. Yeah, which right. could be the main complaint. <laughs> so, but I want to make sure that, that, that if there is a complaint that people can inspect the coops and see what's going on. I am on the, right now I'm looking at the number of chickens allowed and you have a formula here. I, based on what I'm seeing from the other communities, it just seems four hens is, Kind of a, a standard amount. There's a few that have six, but having to do the calculations and stuff, I think it makes it more difficult for the people issuing the permits. Well, it's potentially another. I mean, I would say, you know, according to the information uh, Abby gave me, that most certainly in the downtown area, nobody not too many parcels are going to be greater than a half acre. So you'd be stuck at four for the vast majority. I, 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 I did this graded thing because I didn't, this ordinance isn't limited to just single family. So okay. if there's, if there's That's like a true. school or preschool or other, you know, larger kind of properties, or if somebody does have just a really large property, um, you know, it seemed appropriate. And since we're only, we're only adding one additional end per okay. quarter acre. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know. Jim, do you think that'll be an issue with permitting? Any problems if I going with the number allowed as a calculation? Um, no, I don't think so. Okay. Um, no, I, I don't think there'd be any issues from that, from our end of it anyway. Okay. Okay. Okay, Susan, did you want to add something? Uh, well, I wanted to let you know I need to leave in 10 minutes okay. for my next meeting. Okay. Uh, I think there were a couple of things that we had talked about that I think people need to be aware of. And certainly I heard a very valid complaint tonight. Feed definitely needs to be kept in airtight containers and inaccessible to other animals. Raccoons are great at finding food. They love bird food. And there are some significant problems with raccoons being around. There isn't, they tend to carry rabies or can. Uh, I know the police department has to deal with getting rid of rabbit animals, which is a problem. But the other thing that I'm not sure that many people or aware of. And for the people viewing, I'm a retired microbiology professor from the School of Veterinary Medicine. Um, but raccoons carry a intestinal parasite called Bayless ascaris, which they will excrete when they poop. They tend to set up latrine areas. That parasite, though, if it infects a person, goes to the brain. So it is a significant problem. So having, and it's about 70% of raccoons that carry this. So that's one problem with raccoons. Uh, my biggest concern in terms of the chickens is for removal of chicken poop. Chickens carry salmonella, which causes a GI infection of varying degrees, but can be quite severe. And it's a microbacterium. It is very resistant to desiccation. It survives in the environment for long periods of time, like six months. So we definitely need to be sure people are disposing of the chicken poop safely. I myself don't know if composting in a small little pile would be enough heat to get rid of it. And the people that own the chickens need to be careful in terms of handling the chicken poop. 
So those are two big health hazards that I see. In addition to just knowing that anyone with respiratory allergies or so on, the dust and so on can certainly be problematic. Okay. Thank you, Susan. I appreciate that. Um, just for you, yeah, Susan, so you know that the next issue on our agenda about the smoking, we we can also defer that until the next meeting if we run, we'll, we'll probably run out of time if you want to. Okay. Be part of oh, okay. Yeah. So you don't. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, then under the roosters prohibited. We've heard that there are chickens that take on a behavior like pecking order or they have uh, other issues and they, they do crow. So I'd like it to say roosters and crowing fowl so that it, I've seen that in other ordinances so that they, if, a, if we have a chicken that is crowing and disturbing the, the neighborhood, I think that that would be, we should get rid of that. Um, I do wonder if we should have a maximum for the size of the chicken coops. I'm, I, there are all kinds of standards out there um, under listed. I would think that if you're with, if we're going to be at a certain number of feet from a lot line, that would limit the size, right? Not necessarily. I think responsible chicken owners, they know that right side, having the right size coop is important, especially like in winter time so that they're not too vast. And so I, and I'm not worried about the responsible chicken owners really, mm -hmm. but um, there are all kinds of something that we might want to think about for that. And um, when it says um, uh, this no, no closer than 25 feet to the nearest dwelling unit and 15 feet from all property lines. Is that possible in your district? Um, like I know your houses are closer together than some districts. I, I could not have chickens, but that's, I, I bought a lot, not a farm. So I'm, I guess it's part of what, by, it is very standard that ordinances say 25 feet from the nearest dwelling and had, yeah. does, they do include lo 